If you're looking for some great carnival activities for your Spanish class, you're in the right place. Let's take your students on a virtual field trip to explore carnival throughout the Spanish speaking world in a student friendly way. Let's get right into it. Hey, it's Ashley, AKA Senior to Spanish, where I provide easy to use resources to save you time and energy while you're lesson planning. If you're new here, I just wanna make sure that you know that links to everything that I mentioned will be down in the description box below this video. Okay, let's talk about a one day lesson you can use for carnival in your Spanish classes. This virtual field trip activity is something that I've done with six through 12th grade classes in 45 to 50 minute class periods. It's something that I've used with exploratory level one and level two Spanish classes. So there's a pretty broad range of students that this could work for. If that sounds like you and your setting, keep watching and I'll explain the lesson plan and how to use it with your students. So first off, setup. There's something that you need to keep in mind anytime you do a tech lesson with your students and it's that you need to check the tech before you do it with your classes. I like to use Google My Maps and YouTube, so if your school blocks those websites, this lesson plan isn't gonna work for you the exact same way I'm about to share it. Next, if you're gonna use the printed handouts, you're gonna wanna make copies of those, or you're gonna make sure you make copies of the digital activities to push out to your school's LMS. Quick note in case you're not familiar with it, LMS stands for Learning Management System, so like Google Classroom, Canvas, Schoology, whatever it is your school uses. If you're gonna use the digital version of the student activity pages, you're gonna wanna make a copy of that and then push it out to them through that LMS. Okay, check, check, check. Let's talk about the actual flow of the lesson plan next. When I do a virtual field trip with my classes, I like to start class like how I usually start class. For me, that means our start of class routine, which is a social emotional check-in, a weather talk, and a calendar talk. If you wanna hear more about that, I do have a full video where I explain and show examples of my slides, and I'll make sure to link that for you here, as well as in the description box below. After our start of class routine, we do our normal daily routine. And again, I have a video where I go into that much more in detail, but for starters, if it's Monday, that means weekend talk, Tuesday, that's free voluntary reading, Wednesday, we do Musica Miracles, and so on, right? So whatever day of the week we are, we do that daily routine, and then we'll get into the actual virtual field trip after that. Do you do a daily routine with your students? If you do, comment below the word routine to let me know. Okay, so after the daily routines, I just give them the link to the map and let them explore. Do not give them the handouts yet. This is the part that I think is one of the most important parts of a virtual field trip, and that's the exploration, right? You can't, well you can, but I don't think you should give your students the map and the activities together right away because they're just gonna race to get it done and they're not gonna actually explore as much as they could or as much as you might want them to. So I let students explore the map for about five to 10 minutes of class. And while they're exploring, I'm just walking around and kind of monitoring how that exploration is going. What are they clicking on? What are they checking out? What are they getting sucked into? And I just kind of get a feel for, are they ready to move on or do they need a little bit more time? That's why it's five to 10 minutes because I don't know, different classes react differently to the maps. After that five to 10 minute window of exploration time, that's when I pass out or give them access to the activities themselves. This is a graphic organizer and comprehension questions. And this is the part where their exploration becomes a little bit more guided towards, you know, what are they getting from the map and what are they understanding from the virtual field trip? I have these in a printed and digital format, but for my students who are in class, I prefer to use the printed handouts. I just like it better. And then I just use the digital option for students who might be gone that day or you know, sports or traveling or like whatever, any of those sorts of things. I just post the digital version on our school's LMS. Everybody who is in class gets the printed handout. I also choose between the Spanish and the English versions of the handout depending on the level of students. Sometimes I mix and match and do the map in Spanish, but the questions in English, sometimes they get Spanish, Spanish. Sometimes they get English map, English questions. It totally depends on which level I'm doing this with. Like if I were doing it with my exploratory classes, they're gonna get English, English, but upper levels might get Spanish and then English or Spanish, Spanish. It just depends. So pick and choose before you make your copies obviously. While they're going through the map and working on the activities, I'm circulating the room and just kind of checking on them, making sure they're understanding things, kind of clarifying for them if they have questions, that sort of thing. While they're working, they all tend to finish at different times, so I like to have some sort of fast finisher options available for them. I do have a whole video where I talk about different fast finisher options that I'll link for you here and in the description box below. But for these kinds of things, it might be a trivia game, it might be a YouTube video that I wanted to make sure that everybody watched about this holiday and about this celebration. It might be a puzzle, it might be a game. There's a lot of different options that it could be. 
So I just like to make sure that there's something available for them because they're all finishing at different times, right? Some kids are gonna get the handouts and be like, I'm getting it done. And some kids are going to click through and watch every single video and look at every single picture linked on the map. They're just different kids. So there you have it, a one day lesson plan to recognize, celebrate, and teach about Carnival in your Spanish classes. If you want to, this lesson also works really well as a Spanish club activity for the month of February, or you know, whenever Carnival happens to be because it moves in the year. Please remember to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, click subscribe and ring that bell so you get notified of all new content that I create for you in the future. Oh, and if this was helpful for you, consider sharing it with a teacher friend who might find it helpful too. That's all I have for you today, but if you're looking for more February activities for your classes, make sure you check out my playlist here on February activities for your Spanish classes. It's got lessons and resources you could use for Black History Month, as well as some Valentine's hearts and, you know, love-based resources as well. All right, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.